good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, to Happy Hour from uh, you know, from Maneuver and and from your uh, living rooms, uh, bedrooms, offices, home offices, working spaces, wherever you might find yourself. And uh, this afternoon, I'm joined by uh, some well amazing people that I I both uh, know and have also just met, but. Uh, um, and I, I think I might ask them all to just introduce themselves so that uh, so people can understand where they're coming from. So, but would Annika, would you like to go first, please? Uh, sure, Tyson. Um, hi, everyone. My name's Annika Vandenbroek. I own a brand called Rufus & Coco, which is a global pet care brand selling products into the likes of majors such as Coles and Woolworths and exporting to nine countries around the world. Um, I also operate a salon, a high-end grooming salon called the First Salon in Mossman. And Jeremy. G'day everyone, Jeremy Fleming from Stage Kings. Uh, we now, we were building stages for concerts and music festivals and events and things. Uh, we've, we've quickly switched over now and we're making home office furniture, work from home desks and uh, ISO King desks, we call them. Brilliant. And Will. I am Will from Roller. I'm the COO of a um, leisure and uh, entertainment booking platform. So we uh, obviously serviced a lot of the theme park and entertainment venues, um, but now obviously pivoting to more of a social distancing platform uh, to hopefully help us uh, navigate through maybe the new world after this is all over. Excellent. Look, and I just wanted to thank Rehan and, uh, and, and Rebecca from FinTech Australia who uh, have... Uh, who put this all together from the from a platform and it's uh, their Zoom and we're uh, utilising their platform because uh, it's great to have them involved and you know, big fans of uh, what they're doing for I guess our part of the world at, at uh, in fintech. So guys, look, I'm going to jump in, but of course this is happy hour. So first of all, cheers, uh, cheers and welcome to uh, Friday mm -hmm. afternoon. For uh, some of us, it's uh, I think this is uh, from from Maneuver. It's six weeks uh, working from home. Um, for some of you, I'm, I, I know that it's been even longer. Uh, so uh, it's been a very interesting time. So uh, excellent. So guys, I would love to just jump straight in. Um, the reason I guess I approached all three of you and we approached you is that I know that you've all done a pivot or, or you've made a major change to your business operation. Uh, I just would like to know, look, let's just go with one thing. What's the one major thing? I mean, Jeremy, yours might have given it away in your intro, but uh, what's the one major thing you've done um, that's worked in this, uh, in this world when you've, when you've pivoted? And I'll go with Annika. Are you going to start with me? I don't think my, Tyson, I don't think my pivot will be as major as, you know, Will and Jeremy um, in that, in the pet industry, I think the thing that's been really surprising is um, just how resilient the pet industry seems to be. And, you know, I mentioned before that we sell into supermarkets and pet stores and they're still considered to be essential services. So our core business is still operating. And in fact, we've had a record March and a record April. You know, that said, one of the things that had become an absolute point of focus is um, e-commerce. And, you know, I was on a panel the other day and they said, well, don't mention e-commerce, but talk about what is a major. And I said, I can't answer the question without talking about e-commerce because let's face it, uh, me included, um, you know, shopping has just gone there. And one of the things that we did do is turn on, um, turn on the shopping um, ability of our litter, our cat litter and basically start building out that site. And it's been really exciting actually and, and, and a learning curve um, for me professionally. Great, right, thank you. Jeremy. Yeah, so we would, we were, let's, we'll talk briefly what we did do. Uh, we, we built structures for events and we designed uh, music festival stages and things like the pop-up Globe Theatre, the Shakespeare's Globe Theatre and the Edinburgh Military Tattoo. You know, we built the, uh, the the Edinburgh Castle for that, and Ninja Warrior set, and a bunch of bunch of big stuff like that. And then, of course, the uh, the government ban on public gatherings hit, and hit hard on Friday the thirteenth. We were down doing uh, the um, uh, for the Grand Prix in Melbourne. Uh, we we built the set for Miley Cyrus and Robbie Williams, uh, and and they cancelled all all further public gatherings, which is essentially everything we do, uh, gatherings of people more than five hundred. So. We very quickly uh, got to the drawing board uh, 
uh, after having made the decision, we had, we thought we we have to put all the guys off. We had uh, 23 crew working at the time, and we talked to those guys and said, look, it's for the foreseeable future. We we're going to have to stand you guys down, uh, which we did, and that was on Friday the 20th. It took a week to get to there but, but to tidy up, and then uh, we. On Friday the 20th, that happened. Sunday, uh, we, we had the idea for, for furniture, work from home office furniture. And uh, we very, very quickly got onto that. And uh, Mick, our uh, head of production, got, got designing on Sunday evening. Then by Monday, uh, we had a couple of, uh, I had a couple of uh, 3D prints done of these plans he had. And, and we got into that on, on Tuesday. So by Tuesday, we were... And e-commerce, like Annika said, we, we'd never done that. We're a project-based staging company. Uh, so we very quickly had to watch a few uh, YouTube videos on how to work an e-commerce site, uh, which we did and uh, set that up on the Monday and went live on Tuesday. And, and that was uh, the ISO King uh, desks that we're pushing to this day. That's amazing. Uh, I must, I must, sorry, go. Okay, sorry. So I'm just in awe of that pivot. I think that's such a great story. And I've got a million questions about how you did that, but it's I'm not hosting. Back to you, Tony. <laughs> yeah, look, I I, I, re I reached out, Jeremy, because I actually bought one. You know, a friend of mine put it posted on LinkedIn, and I thought, great, this is awesome. Stand up desk, just what I need. Um, flat pack arrived. One of the guys from the uh, from from the factory delivered it. wasn't a wasn't a uh, courier company. It was amazing. Will. So I mean, we obviously naturally provided a point of sale and, and ticketing system to theme parks. So you think about international travel automatically shut down, you know, gatherings and tourists, very similar to uh, Jeremy. And, you know, our focus, we, we were obviously a global company, so we operated in 28 markets. And, you know, having a consecutive shutdown meant that, you know, we went from, uh, you know, a couple of hundred thousand transactions a day down to about a thousand a week. And that was purely in some click and collect services for hospitality and uh, some in, uh, you know, South Korea and Singapore that was still trading at that time. So, you know, with a massive drop off, you know, one of the core things we understood about our platform was that, you know, we really wanted to focus on the guest experience and well, you know, and then we had to look at, well, where have guests and our people gone? And that was into essential services and retail environments, you know, lines out the front of Bunnings and, and waiting to get into supermarkets. So, you know, what we did was obviously look at repurposing our, you know, capacity management and booking service into a retail environment. And, you know, we did that in the space of, uh, you know, we started basically on the 23rd and by Thursday, we were talking to the likes of Woolworths, uh, Countdown in New Zealand, uh, Cook Eye in terms of brands. And, you know, I think the uh, realisation was that even in this new world, there's still uh, a lot of validity in, uh, you know, generating that guest experience and using technology to do the heavy lifting. So, you know, moving things into your mobile device or waivers and stuff and doing all of those things that, you know, traditional point of sale and self-serve, you know, we're still trying to break through. Um, so, yeah, I think that was something that we knew was coming, but, you know, again, it was still just not adopted and we were thrilled to be able to repurpose the platform into industries that we'd never thought of before or targeted. You know, we really try to keep it as a, as a, a vertical niche. Cool. Yeah. And look, um, for those who don't know, if you've, uh, if you are a fan of uh, trampoline parks or your kids are, you've, uh, you've interacted with roller and just didn't know it back end of, uh, of nearly every trampoline park uh, in the uh, known hemispheres, but, uh, and other venues, but I'm sure there's a lot of parents on the I mean, call who've got trampoline. The thing I always, always say is if you, depending if you're a Paw Patrol or you're an Elsa, whatever party room you want as an investor, I can get that for you. I am basically that nightclub promoter, but now I've moved on to much more uh, advantageous uh, booking. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Will. Thanks, guys. Um, look, and I think even just looking at, you know, uh, we've got some amazing attendees and, and I, I, I think I was going to do the, the quick segue to, to many of you who registered in time or many of you, that for the first 50 people who registered, uh, you probably received uh, your uh, your delivery from Boostbud. Uh, who uh, kindly got on board and helped us out again to uh, to deliver for this afternoon's um, wonderful happy hour. Um, look, I, I'm really interested. I think a lot of companies, I mean, even our own, we we very uh, you know we mobilised, got out of the office straight away, uh, which means that we've all been reliant on technology uh, 
many different types, whether it be from your devices to the NBN to everything. But I'm really keen to know what's the one thing that has really worked for you from a technology point of view, something you didn't expect, or perhaps uh, it's, it's new for you from running remote teams. So what's the one thing you didn't expect from a technology that you got a, an advantage out of? And we might go backwards this time. So Will. I mean, as a software company, we always try to sort of be a trendsetters. I mean, one of the major shifts with technology that we brought in was the use of the camera. And now we have a, a conversational relationship happening at the moment where I'd read about it and understood that, you know, having meetings with your camera running was really important. And I probably underestimated the impact that would have being able to converse with people through a video conferencing system um, you know, we were already doing remote working and we have uh, global teams that we have to relate with, but a lot of the times it was people dialing in on their mobile or uh, essentially not uh, engaging in the same meeting sense. So I think that's definitely one of the major technology shifts and it's really more of a concept that we brought in and we just found fantastic. Jeremy. So for us, like I mentioned, we, we've, uh, we're a project based. We didn't do a lot of uh, a lot on the interwebs uh, at all uh, in the lead up. But um, so we we had to we've had to get a, a more powerful uh, web uh, server. Uh, so we we we've learned a lot along the way too. We're now week five into our uh, pivot. Uh, so we've um, yeah we, we've we've had to change a few things along the way and and build build a better e-commerce site and we've now also uh, incorporated a delivery system for for, uh, for regional areas and interstate and international so for that uh, th that was all new to us uh, and and it's and it's we, we've learned along the way but we've got quite a good system there now cool and jeremy look i'm i'm, I'm really always interested in how um, people choose solutions like i've worked in e-commerce many years and I've seen people deliberate on how to pick a platform to work with. You didn't deliberate, you just went. Um, you can name the platform or not, but how did you pick it and how did it go? So look, we, we, we did it because it was the, the, we went with the easiest one that we could do the quickest at the time. Uh, so we, we have a Squarespace uh, website. And so we, we, we quickly looked at Shopify and Squarespace e-commerce pages. We went with Squarespace because we had the site and it was just an easy, an easy add-on. Uh, since then, we've had to have an API written to to work to communicate between other things. But um, it's uh, look, it was very very simple for us. We really did it with very little uh, with very little uh, knowledge of e-commerce or even websites, uh, and, uh, and and it worked very well. Yeah, look, I'm a big fan of your, uh, your Instagram. Surprisingly, furniture Instagram. Anyway, it, it did work. It's good. I, I do like to see what people have done with your product. It's uh, it's excellent. So anyone that looking for a new channel, a new, beautiful, it's uh, at uh, stage kings underscore au or? Correct, underscore au, yeah. There we go. So, uh, you know, hopefully get a few followers. There's at least 60 plus here I can see that could jump on. Um, it's a bit like anyone that lives in uh, Mossman. I'm sure they now know that there's a great place to go get their, their fur, fur babies uh, fixed up really quickly uh, um, in the current home. So, Annika, like uh, how, yourself, what's the technology that's jumped out for you? You know, we were operating on a lot of um, cloud-based systems anyway. Um, Odoo, Slack, um, pretty much everything. I think it has made us really uh, look at those systems and consider changing some up. You know, Slack to Microsoft Teams, um, which better integrate, you know, with our other email system. I think the best thing that we did um, is is basically work on the wetware um, and that's our people and um, you know we of course don't think of our team like wetware but you know it's not so much the software solve I think it was working on the human element and how we maintain the daily connection um, with our people which we do in a stand-up every day um, we always start with a one-word starter on that um, you know when we when we kicked off we ran on a, a project plan that everyone had to sort of um, feedback every day, um, basically from the time they went home. Um, we've had to help people at home sort out their own internet, um, including myself. I was without internet at home with two kids homeschooling. That was really fun. Um, so, you know, I think, I think the focus, we, we already had the systems. Uh, we will in no doubt improve them, um, I think. And, and um, I think the, 
the best thing that we did is work with the people and try to just maintain um, the energy and you know the optimism and manage everyone's degree of change around that. Great, thank you very much. That, that's awesome. Actually, I've got, I'm going to go, uh, inject a more of a question. I've had a comment. Uh, Jeremy, you're going to love this one. Uh, the comment is, it's almost perfect. Uh, well, you know you can make a new product effectively overnight. What's next on the build? I went, how <laughs> perfect is that? Go for it. So uh, we, we're developing stuff all the time. We've actually got three new ones uh, at the moment. We actually did a podcast uh, yesterday and she said, I really need a footstool. So... Uh, we now have a footstool, which you can't see down beside me here. But the uh, the other thing uh, we've been working on is 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 uh, is uh, this screen here behind us. So uh, you know, product placement uh, during a webcast, yeah. brilliant, well done. <laughs> there you go. Excellent. No, I just it was amazing after we'd spoken before. <laughs> uh, look, jumping on, I know because we're going to chew through time here, but um, I. I and I think I've seen some questions coming through and I'm hoping this capture, captures some of them. Um, with this uh, new way of working and operating your business, what are you going to change permanently moving forward? So, Annika, I'm going to go straight to you. Um, you know, I think it's made us really stop and evaluate our strategy and we've had many sessions to kind of go, was the strategy right? Um, it's pulled out the focus in three areas, which is, you know, diversification of business, um, even diversification of currency, which we have in different markets, given the US dollar taint, is a really helpful thing to have. Um, more e-commerce and more consumable products, because basically what happened is everyone went to panic buying consumables. Um, so, you know, even though the industry is robust, not all of our product categories are. I think the thing that will um, change for us is the way that we work and um, you know, just in terms of people wanting to be more flexible in the way they work so they can get up in the morning and go for a run um, and have a day of more thinking. And, and it, look, it's always a challenge in business and I've always had people um, that have worked for me remotely. Uh, I just think as more people wanna do that, how do we, you know, once again, these systems, because I don't know how many Zoom calls you've been on that, you know, it's kind of like, did you hear that? Oh, is she on mute? Like, it's, uh, we haven't nailed that. And Zoom is still, it's, there's a still a way to go. Um, so it's, it's kind of making me think how we do that. Move to paperless um, accounting systems or just paperless systems full stop. You know, the amount of receipts that I used to collect for stuff that I'd buy. And I'm like, what do I do with these bits of paper? There's no one here to collect them anymore. Um, yeah, and just, you know, trying to get these communication systems and, and routines right so we have the right people in the office at the right times. So I think that's going to be a material shift. And I'm really excited um, for all of us humans that we have the option to be more human on the days that we work from home. Like, I think it does make great team members to get out, do something else and stop having to drive an hour to get to work and back. And, like, I, I think it's a real opportunity, but it also poses a real challenge for how we manage that ongoing. Yeah, agree. Will, thoughts? Um, I mean, we found that, you know, with our global teams, we like to get everyone together. And it was really our dev team that started to work remotely or they needed the correct time. We, we were looking at ways of working very similar to Aniki there and, and what's the most productive. And so giving people that time to essentially work remotely or even work in broader uh, areas of the business. So, you know, one of the things that we had to do straight away was our customer success team. You know, ultimately, if your customers aren't trading anymore and they need to move on to other things, you need to have that ability to port them into other, you know, roles and challenge them with other activities that they weren't traditionally doing or weren't part of their job description. And so what we found is that uh, once we were more, you know, normally we would come up with a strategy and we would try to implement that through the team and try and almost dissect who would be best to take on that role rather than what we're doing now is much more of an open forum or radical transparency about the roles that need to be done and getting people to almost buy into those or take them off the shelf as a sprint, which was something we were doing with, the, with one department but not doing in other areas of the business in customer success. So, you know, we've now got people coming to us, helping us with packaging, pricing and areas that they would never have been included uh, in before. Great. Thanks, mate. Jeremy. 
So for us, the, the changes we've made are essentially a whole new business. So it's, um, we, we, the decisions we're making at the moment are based on how we operate that business into the future. And uh, we, we are certainly going to do that um, the, way, the way that we're setting this up. You know, I see that uh, Australian manufacturing is going to come back in a, quite a strong way. I think we're going to be more reliant on uh, Australian manufacturing and buying local. And uh, the emphasis is going to be more on that <clears throat> moving forward. So we, we, we're setting up a manufacturing facility so that we can, we can do that into the future. So uh, the staging, who knows when that's coming back. Uh, you know, we, we will come back and it will come back strongly, I, I, I'm sure. Uh, the, the word on the street is maybe the, the big stuff, maybe until not next year, internationals. But, you know, I think it will come back uh, progressively. But we're going we're gonna to try and set ourselves up now to, to manufacture and, uh, and, and push this, uh, this new business. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, I, I, I've been thinking like um, how lucky I was. I, got, I went to the firefight uh, concert. And uh, yeah. just when you go, how lucky when you think about timing that that was the last big concert I went to and you remember it a lot more because of it. And it's like, what's going to be the next act I see? So, uh, no, it's excellent. And uh, look, I, I, I want to go to a question from Mimi, one of uh, who's, uh, who's joining. I'm going to grab part of her question, which is really interesting, which is, what have you learned about your customers through this time? Like what the, the customer is obviously king in, in, in this, but what have you learned? And maybe uh, Jeremy, while you're on, you, you, what you, what you found out? Well, obviously you've got new customers. <laughs> well, it's a completely different customer uh, uh, pool we have now. Uh, and, and we've never done retail. So we, we've had to very quickly learn how to deal with customers in retail. And my policy is, is just be open and honest. So uh, anyone that's had any of uh, communication that I've sent out, if we mess up, I'm going to tell you we messed up and we're and what we've done to fix that. Uh, so it's I, I just think if we're open and honest with the with the customers, uh, the, the the feedback we're getting from that has been positive, and I think that's the only way to to, to do it. Yeah, no, I got the stand up desk, which you had the uh, you had to give, send me the extra piece with the, yeah. the slight wobble. It's just a slight wobble, mate. It wasn't much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I, just uh, if I can indulge me for a sec, obviously you've got a lot of big different customers that have all been impacted. I mean, your customers traditional customers have, would have been massively impacted like yourself. Yeah. How, how's the communication been with them? How, how's it been? Like obviously you're having to unwrap a lot of things. Yeah. Look, the support we're getting from the whole events industry is, is very positive. We're, we're doing as much as we can to help that industry out. So we've got 56 guys back working again now. Uh, and every one of those is from the events industry. So the guys that are wrapping and sanding, they're, they're all, you know, we've got event cl festival cleaning companies. We've got uh, people that run venues, uh, everything, site management. So we, we're trying to we, we put the call out to anyone from the event industry that's, that's fallen on hard times. We, we're, we're here. Your, your desk would have been delivered by an event guy. Uh, mm. and, and, in, and in every capital city now, we get, we've got event t guys delivering the desks. And uh, besides that, we're giving $10 from every, uh, every, order of the desks to support act uh, who are supporting the events industry and <clears throat> excuse me so they you know they, they've there's 600,000 event workers out of work uh, that includes all of our clients and so we're we're doing as, as much as we can there and support act to help in those guys oh awesome Annika and then will you can say Annika next time Alrighty, so I suppose our main customers are B2B customers and then, um, and then obviously we have the B2C customers. But just talking about our retail customers, you know, getting an audience um, when you want one with the likes of the buyer of Woolworths and PetSmart in the States and, you know, is often a challenge. And I think what's been really heartwarming at this time is just how human everyone beca became and how, like, literally when you wanted to speak to them, everyone would go, yeah, what do you want, Annika? You're like, what? Well, yeah, sure, I'll work with you on that. Like, everyone became very um, kind of, it was like, it was that feeling that we were all in this together. And, and it's really heartwarming. And I think what it did for the business and the sales team in particular, because I'm always talking about, you know, often these customers, you know, you can't gift them anymore or you can't you don't get any special audience and they change out these buyers all the time so you, it's very hard to develop relationship um, but I think what it did is it just reinforced to the team because I'm always saying this to them and I, they just think I'm an old dog so I've got a different approach to selling but I'm like you cannot remove the human element from selling 
And, um, and I think it just, you know, at the time when the shit hit the fan, um, just being able to get on the phone and get a response um, was, a, was a really big change. Yeah, thank you. That, that's, yeah, the human element, I think we've never probably been more connected, even though we're further apart. It feels like a very different sort of uh, environment for those. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, a lot of people here have uh, enjoyed maybe even other drinks with their friends sitting on all these video platforms. I've been talking to people I haven't spoken to in ages and having really long conversations, but so it's been awesome to have that human element again. Will, sorry, is it Will? Will, uh, your y thoughts? Y-L, Y-L. Well. The tough one to pronounce. Um, with the, I mean, you know, our, our clients try to pivot very similar to Jeremy. So we had a lot of clients that, you know, went into, uh, you know, in the trampoline space, they obviously went to sell the existing stock they had. So they became food delivery services and, and you know, a lot of the supply chains that would obviously fail when they went to the supermarket. We had a lot of those clients obviously being able to service a market or a need of, you know, getting toilet paper in certain markets like the UK and the US. But one of the biggest things that we've seen in our customer base is that as they look to reopen or look to the future and how things have changed, there's been a lot more uh, a partnership. So, you know, we've seen that competitive brands have come together in, you know, uh, regional areas within the US to essentially establish ways that they can open safely and get customers back to the entire industry which, you know, I think was a really, um, you know, again, a, a wonderful thing to occur and not something that, you know, we obviously try to build a community of clients, but, you know, there isn't that same synergy where we're looking at, well, how are we going to be able to make these places that, uh, you know, visitors will come back to you when we are open? Why don't we share the, you know, create a brain trust around this and make it better for all of us, even though we are really in competitive franchise groups or uh, competitive, um, you know, destinations. Mm. Right. Look, I, I'm, I'm really, the, the, it's really important that, uh, you know, I, I, that we all have uh, these great stories and I think remembering the people aspect is even more important. And I think the, uh, the fact that it's not just about pivoting, it's actually been about surviving, which is, uh, and, I, and I feel for all those organ companies and cafes and everyone that was suddenly having to find something new and fun or interesting or just to survive was to, to do something. So look on that, um, I'm interested in, in, in you know, and I've, I've had a few more comments. I mean, what's been the biggest surprise? What's your big business surprise? What's the thing you weren't expecting? And, it, it, and I don't mean outside the pivot, you know, what was the thing you, you had no idea was going to happen? And in the last six to eight weeks of, really shocked you um, about uh, about this before we went into this ISO world. And uh, maybe you start with Jeremy. The thing that shocked me the most is how uh, social media can, can really uh, impact an idea. So we, we had the idea very quickly, turn it around in a couple of days. Uh, we thought we would have three guys back working. We thought it would be enough just to keep our lights on with three guys, keep, our, keep a couple of main guys going. Social media, we, I, the first post I did uh, was seen by 600,000 people. Uh, it was shared around everywhere. And uh, so it, 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 that, that quickly took off. Um, so really, uh, that was the biggest surprise for me was that something like that could happen. And um, it, it's kind of a mini viral uh, thing. And um, yeah, very grateful for that. Excellent. Will? Um, I think it comes back to the, you know, the, the employees that we had at Roller. We uh, were fortunate in the sense that, I mean, we made a, a, a call not to let anyone go. And, and in order to do that, we obviously had to cut back wages and we did it across the board in all markets, uh, you know, uh, essentially a, a reduction in their uh, wage. And, and therefore, we obviously offered a reduction in the, um, you know, the hours and their commitment to the company. And we found that a lot of them, you know, chose to continue as normal and accept the challenge with us, um, as well as accept the challenge of, you know, their colleague, um, you know, regardless of where they sat within the business and, and you're, you know, essentially all of you deciding that, you know, in order for the viability of the company and to ensure that no one loses a job, 
we're all going to, you know, be in this together. And so I, I, I mean, I was hopeful of that, but uh, yeah, did I think it was going to come off? I think that was probably the surprising thing where, you know, I definitely would have thought that um, we would have had a bit of drop off, but, you know, our, our team has been fantastic and we've been able to retain everyone. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Uh, right. Annika? Uh, look, we um, didn't quite know what was going to happen. You know, that's like, we didn't know really what was going to happen in PEP. We made all these um, assumptions and we did a few things well, including sort of pushing extra stock into Woolworths to make sure that we took advantage of the rush buying, those types of things. Um, that said, we, I moved the team back to four days, um, and including the first salon, which is the high-end grooming salon downstairs. Um, and, you know, because I just, you know, it's once you lose the cash, you never get it back. So, um, you, know, it's, well, it's, you know, it's not that you never get it back. It's just, um, you, you, I think it was a timely sort of response that we've changed that now um, in that a lot of our people have moved back to full time. Uh, I think what's been fantastic is despite the fact that they've been working four days, many of them have actually worked five. Um, and, and I think what's conversely been really interesting is just to sort of see at the time when you make the decision to cut everyone back so that you're keeping everyone, you know, um, because we didn't know what was about to happen. Like, I mean, we've, we've fed well, but we weren't sure. Um, I think it really pushed, uh, made really obvious who was on the bus and who's not on the bus. And um, so, you know, as a business owner and a small team, you know, for me, it's not an option to not be on the bus um, and to not work together as a team. It's not an option. You know, it's the whole one team, one dream. So I think, um, you know, that's been interesting. Very good. And look, that probably led to the next question, which was one we, we spoke of, you know, your experience with your, your people, your employees, um, have you had a certain experience that's popped out or stood out above all else? Like um, someone that's shown some great character commitment, something that you weren't expecting from it. Was it a surprise person or was the person you expected? You know, in, in, and obviously you don't need to name them, but more about is there someone that, uh, that really, really jumped out, uh, has jumped out for you during this time and, and just really doubled down on, 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 on themselves in your organisation? Who do you want to go, Tyson? <laughs> you can go first. You, oh, you started. I'm going to go straight back okay. to you. Um, I mean, yeah, look, I spoke to my finance and operations executive earlier. You know, we're out of stock of a number of lines. Not great. You know, I hate being out of stock. But, you know, like at the end of the day, freight's delayed. We've had exceptional orders, blah, blah. He told me um, that he worked till 3 a.m. in the morning last night just to try and reconcile payments um, you know, coming through blood to try and finish off our, some of our reporting that we've really been trying to do. I mean, 3 a.m. That's, um, that's super unicorn status. I always call my people unicorns, people that come to create magic every day. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, that's well and truly beyond going the extra mile. Um, and, you know, so appreciate it. And this is a man that's working four days. Um, but yet is still working five days today. He's rocked up to work today. So I just... That's exceptional. Wonderful. And, I'm not uh, because I don't want anyone to poach him. Yeah. We start, we start oh, looking at my finance manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy. So everyone downstairs now is, is in a different role than they were in a month ago. Uh, so we've got set builders that are now uh, doing dispatch and the one guy that stands out is is one of our set builders who moved into dispatch early on. He came up with the procedures, he wrote the processes, and and they they're bang on. So he's just he's taking complete ownership of that, and he, he stands out amazing. Yeah, he's done a great job. And look, if I could jump in because uh, you did a podcast with a, a friend of mine, and I and the uh, the. the you mentioned how uh, actually I'll, I'll call out Sam Sam Charlton if you want to uh, if you want a great little podcast to jump onto she's uh, she's on Spotify um, but um, importantly can you uh, as well can you tell us like it was someone who came up with the concept how did that like the actual first the first, product yeah 
so the, first, the, first, the the idea itself came, so I was talking to a friend in Ireland who, uh, I think a guy named Steve, uh, a company called uh, um, Flying Elephant in Ireland. He, uh, he was, we were messaging and he said, uh, look, you, you know, we're, we're looking at doing some furniture. Why don't you guys consider that? You, know, you guys have got a router and similar sort of a skill set. Let's, uh, why don't you take that on? So, so he helped us out there and um, uh, that, that's what gave us the, the initial uh, thought to, to do it. And we ran with it from there. And so we've actually, since then, we've, we've, we've paid that forward. Uh, and now the three of us, so he's, he's working in Ireland. We've given him our designs. Uh, and we've also got uh, some uh, some guys we work with in the Netherlands now as well. We've given our designs to them so that we can uh, pay it forward, help, help some other event guys out in different countries. Right, open source. Love it. <laughs> Will? Um, you know, for those of... You can't, the, you can't say yourself, Will. You can't nominate yourself. I, I, I wanted to. Point. I wanted to. I thought better of it. I'm moderating myself on the other side here, but... Um, you know, for us, one of the uh, biggest things for those building software, um, you know, unlike a house, you normally start with what your idea is and you keep going along and you end up trying to make a Porsche, but it really looks like a combination of about a Porsche and a Range Rover and you start bolting things on and it's called technical debt in the hierarchy of the system. And so naturally, one of the biggest problems with technical debt is when you try to get rid of it, you have all of the customers that have been, you know, attached to that uh, bit of functionality. And so when I look at the employees, you know, as soon as there was downtime and some reduction in the thing, we naturally brought forward all of these projects that guys had had lofty ideas of that, that hopefully they would be either able to retire or find a better job somewhere else where they didn't have to deal with it. And we went after those uh, those projects with a vigor, um, and so uh, you know those guys had to rapidly bring forward uh, timelines that you know we're talking two year timelines of migration that uh, the guys rallied around, and, and I know that uh, some of those guys worked late into the night in order to manage time zones and connect with our UK team, you know, to to deliver something that ultimately isn't going to get used until we start to bounce back for our clients, but. You know, these are big technical changes and the guys, you know, took that on. And, and this, you know, the technical debt is not fun stuff to get into. It's, you know, you're looking at someone else has built something that you don't really understand and you have to understand it before you can change it. So that was a big, a big thing for us and, and a massive shout out to our product team that, and uh, CTO, CIO that got that done. Right. Yeah, look on. Yeah, I, I'm conscious that it's you know, it's probably a whole bunch of people, and there's not a single person that you know, it's, a, it's the effort of many um, that, that's really pushing through this for a lot of companies. So, thanks, guys. I, I I do actually appreciate your honesty and your openness here because I think that's what we really want to achieve this afternoon. The whole point of the happy hour is to actually give some people some uh, some light. Um, you know, there's no no shortage of darkness. Just turn on every other media stream in the world, and you know how bad it is, mind you. For, for, for many of us, it means we can have two people uh, in, uh, in the house this weekend. Um, you're soon going to find out where you rate on your friends list, it would seem. So, uh, yeah, uh, if you're not the first two invited, you can probably start deleting off Facebook. Um, guys, I want to jump into something else uh, uh, that I, I actually, I've, 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 it's probably more for me. This is all about me, this one. Um, as you know, Maneuver is actually a payments company. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't actually ask yourself, ask the questions. And I'm, uh, Jeremy's probably got the best one out of this. And, and I know Annika as well. Um, and no shortage of conversations I've had with Will over payments companies in the year. But um, when choosing, you know, when you look at payments, like what are your views? Like things have even changed in payments in the last six weeks, the way that, you know, cash is disappearing and, and what we're doing. But you're obviously looking for vendors or you're looking for partners, or you're looking for people to help you. Like what, what, what are you using that strategy? And it doesn't even have to be in payments. Like people that help you, from a, a vendor point of view, but you know, if you want to focus on payments, that's fine. But uh, yeah, so I might go straight back at you, Will. So, I mean, in terms of, you know, looking at vendors, uh, you know, Tyson, we've worked together for a long time and, uh, you know, it goes back, um, you know, to that people relationship stuff for us to procure a vendor. Um, I think the important thing is to, uh, really have an understanding of the destination when you're procuring 
these things. So, you know, one of the, you know, definitely with Maneuver, we've found with Roller that there is a, a clear trajectory for us to work together in the future. And there's things that you guys are doing for us, but we were able to share what our needs were. And that makes it easier for suppliers and, and potential partners to always come to us with, you know, when they are ready. And that's the ultimate, you know, synergy because it should really be partnerships rather than procurement, uh, you know, relationships uh, for us. Um, and that's what works really well when we're looking for, you know, general payments companies and, and we've worked with a, a lot of them and um, uh, we always find it works best when we are really clear on what we want and we can share it, um, you know, succinctly and, and clearly. And, and Jeremy is obviously gone from zero to an e-commerce mm. provider. How did that go? So, well, we, we didn't put a, a huge amount of time and, uh, and energy into thinking about payments. We, we knew of uh, PayPal and, uh, and Stripe, so we kind of uh, went straight for that, um, which uh, did, initially didn't work because uh, it took off so quickly. They all put our payments on hold saying, hang on, hang on, this, cause this has got to be some sort of, uh, this has got to be some sort of scam, you know. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, yeah, so it took, it's I feel your pain, uh, Jeremy. I might have worked for one of those organisations in the past. Right, so, uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, feeling your pain, feeling your pain. Taking us the best part of three weeks to get money, but um, <laughs> so look, look, that that's that's one thing. And uh, to be honest, not coming from a, an e-commerce or retail background, we didn't even know there were options for that kind of thing. Yeah, we we pay for things. You pay by credit card with PayPal, and so that's that's what we thought we had to do. But um, moving forward, we know there's other options. <laughs> But um, look, as, as far as as far as uh, as our clients helping us out, it's it's really uh, our vendors helping us out. Sorry, mm. the amount of support we're getting from everyone has been amazing. Everyone's shared the story, and everyone's uh, driving people to, over to us. And no one person's helped helped more than anyone else. It's just been an amazing, uh, yeah, story. Excellent. And um, and on that. Um uh, you know, if I look at what we do in payments, because we're not very credit card focused, more on the, um, business to business payments. Have you found uh, payment terms? Because um, obviously, uh, you know, one thing we've seen is people, you know, the whole concept of credit, um, you know, you know, 30, 60, 90 day invoices, everyone's gone, oh my God, that's like that, you know, because, you know, in these times, uh, giving people a long line of credit isn't a thing. And you've obviously now got new vendors that you haven't used before, but also older vendors, I'm guessing from the raw materials, they're probably some of the same vendors. How have they been in that relationship? Look, most of the, most of the suppliers are our same, uh, same suppliers. We, we've, uh, we've, when we started, when, when we ordered all of the birch pie left in the country, everyone was jumping over each other to help, to help us out. But um, we, um, we, we, we've used the, the same vendors for quite some time on that stuff. You know, the, the, we, we, the stages we do use, utilise a lot of that same stuff. So we've got a lot of terms with those guys. And, but the one thing we wanted to make sure of, because the events industry is in such a disarray, we wanted to make sure we're paying them more quickly. So we, we've done deals with those guys to help them out as well. Oh, great. Brilliant. And Annika, so I, know, I know you've got a story, you may or may not share it, but um, payments. Uh, okay, so I'm not quite sure what story that is, Tyson, but... Um, oh, you wrangled a very large organisation. Come on, you remember that one. Change some terms. Oh, you changed yourself, go on. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. I did do that. Um, uh, so, well, like a bit... I suppose then sort of not talking really about e-com payments, but yeah, just in terms of, terms of talking about liquidity, um, Woolworths is such a major customer to us. And, um, you know, when I talked earlier about the buyers, you know, showing some flexibility, I mean, obviously the ones that, they're the ones that have gained. I saw a report today that showed growth of 10.8% in Woolworths over the last quarter. Yeah, it's just absolutely unheard of. Usually their growth rates stick around 2%, 3%. So, you know, I went with my cap in hand and asked for better payment terms um, and got significantly um, better payment terms. So, um, hard to talk about here, but like months worth of change um, on very large amounts of money, um, which has made a very material difference and hence the reason someone in finance is up to three in the morning trying to reconcile all the payments. Um, let that be my problem. Um, I think, you know, in terms of uh, online, uh, you know, really 
our online business and our B2C business, if you like, is something that we will focus on growing. And, and I think, you know, I, I myself have my training wheels on and at rapid pace, I'm learning how it all works. Um, we have engaged a consultant to work with us um, in terms of um, trying to pull it, pull it, well, trying to, in terms of the build. Um, I mean, what I do understand and what I'm good at is actually customer. I understand customers and customers' behaviours. And, and what I know from that is that customers, you know, want to be able to buy what they want easily and transact easy. I mean, the whole thing should be an easy experience and then basically the stuff should rock up the next day. Um, so I understand the role of payments within that. And I know, Tyson, when you've spoken to me before, you've sort of talked about the period between the payment and the receipt of payment and that type of thing. You know, really our e-commerce business hasn't been um, big enough to sort of worry about the piece of work on that, but it, but it will be. Um, so, so lots of opportunity for review there. Excellent. And look, um, if you could just tell, I mean, I, I'm sure there's a few people here who've got large organizations that they that they have to invoice is there a was there a tip or trick was it a, a phone call an email was there something you asked for that made them make that change of that payment terms that, that helped relationship okay that 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 will do it excellent but i, I look i think that um for many of us it's about having that that conversation and that, and asking i think yes relationship is core cool. So uh, really, oh, thank yeah. you guys. I mean, sorry. I was going to say, Tyson, I think that, you know, the biggest take out though is to ask. And there's a lot of times when people don't, they just sit back and expect people to offer. And I think in anything you should always ask, whether it be from the employees, the suppliers, to anyone that you're working with, that if you want to look for those uh, terms and stuff, I mean, obviously there's a great reason at the moment, um, but most people, um, you know, uh, are willing to work with uh, people if you're open and transparent around it. You know, they're definitely not out there, um, <clears throat> you know, trying to hold off advantage. And if you can ask, then you're likely to receive. I think that's the same. A bit cliched. Not at all. Thanks, Will. Guys, look, I know we're, uh, we, we've sort of set this down for a 45 minute to, to, to an hour sort of chat and a drink. Um, I actually might start the last question. Um, which I've already prepped you with, but um, mainly because I you know, want to make sure we round the, round the time out. Um, but I, before I do that, you know, again, just a big thank you to, to the three of you for, for your time this afternoon. And again, FinTech for FinTech Australia for helping us out with the platform and um, Booze Bud for, well, the, the boost, to be honest. Uh, I know many of you uh, have received booze. Um, those who haven't, um, Strangely, because it's on, it's my account's attached. I'm getting text messages around all the deliveries. So, you know, all uh, all over Australia, I'm seeing people getting stuff delivered. So, if it hasn't hit you this afternoon, it uh, soon will. I know that it was about the first 50 people that um, that registered. So, uh, it was great. Uh, it was great to have uh, have that amount. So, uh, hopefully, everyone's enjoying a, a quiet afternoon drink, guys. Uh, the last thing is. Um, because I want to leave on, on, again, it's been very positive this afternoon, but to finish on, it's like that one, that one positive business experience you've had, like that one thing where you've gone, you know, thank God I'm here. I've really enjoyed this. My, my, my number one business experience. And if I might, even personal experience during this time. So the business and then the personal, and I might start uh, with you, uh, Will. Um, I think from a business perspective, we're very fortunate to have a great team of advisors and investors that are supporting the business through this time. So, uh, you know, it's positive. Uh, you know, we start, I was one of the founders, founding partners in the, in the group and it was, um, you know, now that we're so far along and when we face this massive challenge, you know, you really do understand who your friends are and from a perspective, you know, the, uh, you know, our shareholder group and advisors who have navigated crises and different types of crisis have um, just been pivotal, uh, pivotal, pivot, pivot, pivotal. Well, I can't even speak now. But ultimately, they were just incredible to us in terms of navigating it and, I mean, very, uh, again, realistic about what the future holds in terms of the bounce back and stuff. So, you know, from that perspective, that was a really positive uh, business experience that we have built something that is, uh, you know, still people are behind and, and 
you know, like Jeremy, we're hoping that it will bounce back. And when that happens, you know, no one really knows, but we do see a, a future to that. Um, and then I suppose one, you know, last personal one, while it wasn't, um, you know, I think we're just, uh, we were preparing for the Oxfam 100 kilometer walk, um, you know, prior to this. And uh, we were obviously doing a lot of training and walking through the night. And, uh, you know, what we, saw on the news once the event was cancelled, me and my uh, wife was, you know, that people in other countries were forced to walk, you know, 800 to 900 kilometres to get back to their home villages. And I think that, you know, understanding of just realising how lucky you are in this world to be able to do all those things with walking sticks and we went down to Anaconda and bought all of this crap um, that people don't have. And I think that really uh, gave me a sense of gratitude to... Uh, other people's experience and, and uh, you know, following on Jeremy's lead, we'd love to be much more, uh, you know, aware of what other people go through and give back um, where we can as an organisation and both personally as well. Thanks, mate. Really appreciate that. Jeremy. For me, the most positive thing in, in for both business and personal it's, is, is having... No, you don't get away with that easily. It's got to be <laughs> two, two answers. Okay, okay. I'll start with, I'll start with the personal... Uh, but having the crew back, we've got 56 guys down there working now and every one of them is, is it's such a positive place to be now. Everyone feels like they're doing something that's good. Uh, they're, they're, they're not at home listening to the negativity that's going on at the moment. It's, it's just the most positive group of people uh, to be around and, and knowing that they're back here from, from uncertainty is, uh, is really a great feeling. Um, Business-wise, similar to Will, you know, we've got uh, we've got a, an amazing team behind us, and when this when we when we had this idea, so many people put their hand up to help, uh, which was was just amazing. You know, Mick, our, our two IC, Mick Jessup, he just the, the fact that he uh, has this furniture background that uh, that was was just perfect. His his wife uh, is a, is a PR agent. That was perfect. Now, we've got some of the best people from the events industry now here working with Sean and Mully, Nick Martin, the list goes on. These guys that run some of the best events in the country are helping us deal with clients and helping us take uh, phone calls. And uh, it could, couldn't be a better team of people together. And it's just it's such a positive place. So you, you MacGyvered the hell out of it. Brilliant. Yeah, it. yeah. A, well, not MacGyver. Look, again, you, as you've mentioned, it's, it's just really fortunate positions at fortunate time and, and a whole lot of great attitude. Yeah, that's it, I think. And uh, Annika? Uh, the thing I've just loved is that, you know, we, I mean, I have a real passion for this industry. Um, I, you know, pets have always been a massive part of my life. And I just love the fact that with everyone, you know, being at home, pets are just loved up more than ever. And, um, and you know, the pets are truly good for people's physical and mental well-being. And I think, you know, just it's been interesting to see everyone out and about walking their dog and, you know, adoptions being at an all-time high. You know, in New York, they ran out of animals to adopt. Um, you know, they, I, I'm grateful for the fact that the industry is actually quite a robust industry um, you know, even I started the business during the global financial crisis. So I feel like, you know, it's been, I sort of observed it in that time. Uh, I think from a personal perspective, I think it has been a real challenge of leadership. Um, you know, just trying to keep everyone calm <laughs> at the same time as keeping yourself calm and, and trying to figure out what's going to happen when actually you just don't know what's about to happen. And, and I think, um, you know, certainly in those first few weeks, I wobbled. Um, I also support a number of businesses that I mentor and, and you know, they're in, they're, in business, they're in areas of industry that are highly affected. And, um, you know, so I just think, I think personally, it's been a really good um, learning curve in terms of myself and my ability to lead. And I've learned some good lessons from that. And, and being a, I think what's been amazing is, having the time with family and, and my two children, um, you know, we've, we've had a Monopoly game running for weeks and um, my son is a Monopoly shark. I've never ridden a bike so much in all my life. Like, I just think that having that, it's really precious time that I think they're going to remember forever. 
um, along with some really good lessons that will stick with them in terms of, you know, saving for a rainy day, which I think some of the generations in between have perhaps forgotten about. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. For, look, look, yeah, look, really appreciate all three of you for spending your time this afternoon with us. And <clears throat> I hope again, everyone can uh, grab a glass, enjoy the rest of the afternoon um, and, and work out that we've uh, done a pretty good job of this over the last six, seven, eight, whatever weeks you are for each person, because I know it's different for, for many. But look, um, we're going to call to a close. Um, I think we've had a great session and I really appreciate time. And look, um, you know, I think we've, uh, we all know where to go now if we uh, need, you know, if you're in, if you're in Sydney and <clears throat> you know where you need to get your dog groomed, that's easy, you know, up on uh, at Mossman. Um, but if you if you're not go to Woolworths and you can find some great uh, shampoo and other products for your for your pet that you love. For Jeremy, that's easy. Come on, guys. Stage Kings, you know, just go get your stand up desk, get your other desk, get your footstool, get your pegboard. I think the pegboard's what I want next. That looks <laughs> awesome. I, I I highly think that could be my next uh, my next purchase. And for Will, um, getting a haircut. No, I'm not sure what. We're, no. For, uh, for Will, it's going to be, though, anyone, anyone that's out there obviously is looking at how do you manage large crowds, small crowds, any crowd. And, and I think, you know, having known uh, Will for years, I know that uh, it's just, you know, we, we will we'll have touched his business today or many times in the future because, uh, because we're out there enjoying, enjoying ourselves. And I'm sure the moment we get the chance to throw our children and ourselves back into trampoline parks, I reckon that's going to be the next big thing is the adults are going to go, no, I want to have a crack too. I'm not going to sit on the sidelines anymore. I'm actually going to get involved. So uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for everyone attending. Thanks for all the attendees. Uh, thanks for the questions. Uh, thanks for the feedback. And uh, look forward to, uh, talking to you, talking to you all very soon. Cheers, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks very thanks much, Jonathan. Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Annika. Hey, guys. Thanks so much.